boundary between fiction and non-fiction is blown. You know, we are now getting biographies in which there's invented conversations. There was the biography of Ronald Reagan where there was a whole invented character, uh, that character called Dutch. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? But, um, or there's, there are biographies now where there's invented dialogue. You know, people invent the conversations that their subjects have had. Um, because I said at the beginning I try to write biographies like novels, every non-fiction writer, creative non-fiction writer, um, is trying to write like a novelist because novels are easier to read often than non-fiction. Um, you can engage with the, with the characters more easily um, and it, it's a, a, a more accessible form. But um, I have this lovely uh, quote from Chekhov in my notes, where you know, which is about the symmetry of, of fiction. If you say in the first chapter that there is a rifle hanging on the wall, in the second or third chapter, it absolutely must go off. If it's not going to be fired, it shouldn't be hanging there. Every detail has significance, and the writer can manipulate those details to keep the plot moving forward. Well, and there are no coincidences in, fest, in, in fiction. A chest pain is always followed by a heart attack. A phone call is always significant. Well, of course, we know in our everyday lives a chest pain might disappear and you've forgotten about it tomorrow. But you might have put it in a letter to your best friend, and I'm going to come along in a uh, hundred years' time and say, oh, he's got a chest pain. What does this mean? There's no point in me quoting it unless it is followed by a heart attack. Um, but nonfiction lives are never as neatly, never follow the neat pat pattern that fiction does. Life is chaos, as I said earlier. So when you say, how much do you invent? My own rule for me, and this is only for me because other writers are doing very different things, and um, either applauded or getting away with it, depending on what your attitude to them is. Um, I never invent dialogue. I use what looks on the page like a lot of dialogue, because there's tons of stuff in inverted commas, but that's actually all quotes from letters. And if you have a rich resource of letters to work with, you can actually have a conversation between Alexander Graham Bell and his wife Mabel, because you have the exchange of letters and you can say, um, for, you know, Mabel will say, you know, Alec, do you know what you're doing? Um, when, are, when are you going to leave for deck, Alec? Mabel asked. Alec was reluctant to reply, uh, but eventually he admitted to his wife, um, I will be back in Washington by so and so. On the page, it looks like a conversation. In fact, it's taken out of letters. But it is their voice, and it's not invented. You, you emulate fiction, and you emphasize any connections or coincidences that do happen. I mean, they're just absolutely pure gold when you, you, you realize that you, know, you have a mention of a smoking chimney in 1893 and then in 1895 the whole place bursts into flame. You think this is wonderful, I've got you know the, the cause and the effect, but it doesn't often happen. So you don't invent, but you do imagine. And when I talked to, earlier about how to use photographs, you know, what you can take out of the photograph, that is an act of imaginative recreation.